need to go to work, but you're worried about what to do with your brand new puppy? For the best puppy training tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit the bell to stay notified when I post new content each week. In this video, I'm going to share my top tips to successfully crate train your puppy so when you leave to go to work, you won't worry about your puppy getting into trouble, having accidents all over your home, or chewing up your furniture. We don't want to leave a young puppy with access to their whole home, and in most cases, even leaving them in one room can prove to be a grave mistake. I've taught thousands of new puppy owners my crate training techniques to get their puppies to quickly love going in their crate, and now I want to share those tips with you too. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog, the place for online puppy training courses for new puppy owners. Let's get started with today's lesson. Most new puppy owners that reach out to me about new puppy training completely dismiss using a crate for their puppy. They tell me they don't like it, they don't like the idea of putting their puppy in it, and they will never use it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they must have never seen a baby in a crib, a pack and play, a baby playpen. Those are all used to keep babies safe when their parents or caregivers can't hold them when they have to step away for a moment to use the bathroom, uh, to switch over the laundry, to go grab the mail. I mean, these are the times they would not be able to supervise their child 100% because they needed to take their attention away for just a short bit. Listen, crates are one of the most important tools you can use when raising a puppy. Puppies love to explore the world around them, mostly with their mouth. This means your home is fair game. Cords, carpets, furniture, cabinets, doors, shoes, blankets, you get the picture. These are all things my students have shared with me that their dogs have destroyed when they didn't use a crate to keep their puppy safe when they were away. In order to teach your puppy to love their crate, we have to make sure we make it the best place ever. For this reason, we never use it as a form of punishment. Definitely a place for some downtime, nap time, and bedtime, but never because we want to scold them. In order to make the crate a great place to be, you can start by feeding all of their meals in their crate, just the food, not the water. Leave water out of the crate as this just becomes something fun to play in, makes a mess when tipped over, and leaves them needing to go potty more frequently without a way to relieve themselves if they are left in their crate. We never want to encourage a dog to go potty in their crate. The next best way to make their crate positive is to give high value treats to your pup each time they go in it. Now, you'll want to make sure your pup is well exercised before they go in their crate. You never want to put a fully charged up puppy in their crate with tons of pent up energy. They will go stir crazy and they won't settle down in there very well at all. Using the right size crate is key. Your crate should only allow your puppy enough room to turn around and lay down, not pace or jump around in there. We don't want our puppies to have enough space to try and go potty in one end and sleep in the other. It's flat. It's just not going to work, right? We don't ever put pee pads in their crate either. If you've watched my other training videos on pee pads, you'll know I never use them. You may need to use the divider your crate came with if you're using a black metal crate. Dogs love to find comfy, cozy places to rest. It makes them feel safe and secure, so I recommend you cover the crate with a sheet. But here's the deal. You will need to put something bigger than the crate over the top, like a piece of plywood or a piece of cardboard. This way, when you put the sheet over the top of the crate, it doesn't touch the sides. Your puppy won't be able to pull the sheet inside the crate. Also, only cover the front and the sides, leave the back open, and put the crate up against the wall. This is best for airflow, and so your puppy doesn't see a bunch of things that they can get them, that can get them overexcited while they're in their crate. You can help your puppy settle in their crate even better by playing calming music for dogs using a heartbeat dog, and diffusing pure lavender. You can use a DAP, or dog appeasing pheromone, such as Adapto. This is like a scent the mother dog gives off to calm her pups. I'll put a link below to all of the products I mentioned in this video, including that one. Now, this may be the hardest advice 
to follow, but I want you to hear me out on this one. Here goes. Don't put any bedding in their crate until you know they can be trusted. For most puppies, this isn't until they're past the teething stage and past the adolescent chewing stage that usually kicks in around eight to 10 months. My rule of thumb is no bedding under a year. Here's why. Most puppies want to potty on their bed while it's in the crate or chew on their bed. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, dogs can get into a lot of things that need to be surgically removed and bedding is one of them. The only thing I put inside a dog's crate are hard chew toys like Nyla bones that can't be pulled apart, destroyed or ingested. Trust me when I say this. I worked at a vet's office and we saw more bowel obstruction surgeries because new puppies ate bedding left in their crates. Owners felt more terrible that their puppy had to have the surgery than if they hadn't put anything in the crate in the first place. You can also keep your puppy busy with a frozen filled Kong. This is a great teething toy as well as a busy toy to keep them occupied when you leave. You should periodically put your pup in their crate throughout the day, even when you're home. One, it helps them settle down, and two, it teaches them they can go in their crate whether you're there or not. And three, it helps them learn that you don't go in your crate or they don't go in their crate only when you leave. It just makes craning less stressful and gets them used to it a whole lot faster. You may only be able to keep your puppy in their crate for a small increment of time when you start but gradually increase the time that they're in there. And whatever you do, do not let them out of their crate when they're crying, whining, barking, throwing a temper tantrum, or anything similar. Your puppy will quickly learn that if they cry, you'll come running and let them out. This is not how we teach puppies to love their crate. So the next time you leave to go to work, don't make a big deal about it. Don't say things like, I'm sorry, don't worry, I'll be back, it's okay. I won't be gone long. This only increases their anxiety. Do calmly put them in their crate after they've been well exercised with a busy toy like a Kong or a Nyla bone, the things I mentioned before. Close the door, cover the crate, turn on the calming music, and head out the door. Now, your puppy may need to be let out for a potty break during the day or maybe even a few times, depending on their age. The rule of thumb is one hour for each month of age. That's about how long they can hold it. If you can't make it home, have a friend or a family member come to let your puppy out. There are also dog walking services that offer this service as well. Okay, don't forget to check out my other videos on puppy training. You're going to learn a lot. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to grab the free puppy training starter kit. Remember, the link is below. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button and share it with other new puppy owners so they can learn about crate training their puppy too. In the comments below, tell me, where do you keep your crate? I'm going to share my top tips to successfully puppy So when you leave to go to work, you won't worry about, oh my goodness. Do not let them out 